Hi viewers, welcome to our channel Dissection of Human Body. We are going to have a series of videos on osteology of head and neck. Osteology of head and neck includes the skull and mandible plus the cervical vertebrae. The structure of the skull, external feature of the skull can be studied by looking at it from various angles. The study of the lateral view of the skull is known as the norma lateralis. When you are looking at the skull from above, it is called norma verticalis. And the posterior view is norma occipitalis. When you are looking at the skull from front, it is called norma frontalis. And the basal view is norma basalis. In this video, we are going to discuss about the norma frontalis. My colleague, Dr. Maggie, will talk about norma frontalis. Over to her. Hi viewers, hope everybody is doing fine. Today we will discuss about the norma frontalis of the skull. What is norma frontalis? When we view the skull from the front, it is called as the norma frontalis. So when we view the skull from the front, the bones which we can see are the squamous part of the frontal bone, the two nasal bones which unite with one another in the center and form the bony framework for the nose. The two zygomatic bones laterally which forms the malar prominence, the maxilla which forms the upper jaw and the mandible which forms the lower jaw. The apertures which we see in the norma frontalis are the pair of orbital openings which is quadrangular in shape that usually lodges the eyeball and the structures associated with it. It usually has four margins. This is the supraorbital margin which is formed by the, by the frontal bone entirely. At the junction of the lateral two thirds and the medial one third there is a notch. This is called as the supraorbital notch. In some bones it is being converted into a foramen. This is known as the supraorbital foramen which transmits the supraorbital nerves and vessels. This is the infraorbital margin which is formed by the maxilla medially and by the zygomatic bone laterally. A few centimeters below the infraorbital margin there is an infraorbital foramen which transmits the infraorbital nerves and the vessels. This is the medial orbital margin which is ill defined. It is formed by the frontal bone above and by the frontal process of the maxilla below. This is the lateral orbital margin. It is formed by the zygomatic process of the frontal above and by the frontal process of the zygomatic bone below. They meet at a suture known as the frontozygomatic suture. Frontozygomatic suture which is usually felt as a groove in the living subjects. This is the anterior nasal aperture which is triangular in shape. It is also known as the pyriform aperture. It is formed by the nasal bones above and by the nasal notches of the maxilla below. Here we see a prominence. This is known as the anterior nasal spine. This is the maxillae. It contains the, this is the body of the maxilla and usually it has got four process. We are able to see the three process here in the norma frontalis. This is the frontal process which usually meets the nasal bone and the frontal bone. This is the zygomatic process and this is the alveolar process which usually lodges the teeth. On either side we are able to see the incisive fossa and lateral to that there is the canine fossa. On the lower aspect we are able to see the mandible which is usually formed by the two halves. The details of the mandible will be explained to us in the next video. The two halves of the mandible meet each other in a at the symphysis menti and there is a protuberance here which is known as the mental protuberance. On either side we are able to see a foramen. This is known as the mental foramen which usually transmits the mental nerves and the vessels. Above the supraorbital foramen, there is a curved ridge. This is known as the superciliary arches. 
the superciliary arches will meet at meet one another in a raised elevation which is known as the glabella in between the two nasal bones there is an internasal suture and in between the nasal bones and the frontal bone there is a frontonasal suture so the meeting point of the internasal suture and the frontonasal suture is known as the nasia in the zygomatic bone we are able to see a foramen this is known as the zygomatic foramen which transmits the zygomatico facial nerves and the vessels so if we see here the supraorbital foramen the infraorbital foramen and the mental foramen are usually are present in a single line we have come to the end of the norma frontalis thank you for watching this